There are four different levels of dhikr and I'm going to go through the different four levels. Each level is going to get higher than the last and each level, the new level I'm going to mention is going to be better than the previous one. The lowest level of dhikr is when the tongue is moving but the mind is absent. This means that a person is, for example, they are saying something in their salah like Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Their tongue is moving with the praise of Allah, but the mind is totally absent. For this, you will get reward, but you won't be drawn closer to Allah. You won't feel that closeness to Allah Azza wa but you'll get the reward. So anytime you've done some dua, you've actually stood in salah, you've done some tirah of the Quran, but your mind wasn't present with Allah, you will still get the reward. But the main purpose of our dhikr that we do in this religion, that main benefit you won't get. The next level above that is when the tongue is still, so the tongue is not moving, but the mind is present. So the example of this is that I just merely think Allah is watching me. I'm not moving my tongue with anything, but I'm just thinking Allah is watching me. I'm just thinking of Allah's creation. So for example, I'm thinking of the stars and I'm amazed at how Allah created all of that. I'm looking at the mountain, the ocean. I'm looking at Allah's earth. I'm looking at the clouds, how Allah has suspended them in midair. And I'm looking at how Allah has created so much of his creation. I could be sitting with a pomegranate in my hand, just opening up, looking inside and saying how wonderfully Allah has designed that pomegranate inside. Side. I'm just thinking of that. I'm in the dhikr of Allah. I'm now in the second level of dhikr. I get reward for this and I also come closer to Allah through this. The third level, when the tongue is moving and the mind is present. When I'm in salah, for example, I'm reading Surah Fatiha and I'm also just thinking Allah is watching me. If you know the meanings of Fatiha, if you know the meaning of Subhan Rabbil Azim in salah, you're thinking of exactly what you're saying. Or by the least, you just think I'm in front of Allah, I am praying. So the tongue is moving, Subhan Rabbil Azim, and and I'm thinking Allah is watching me or I'm thinking that my Lord is so wonderful, the most great, Subhan Rabbil Azim. Or I'm reading my Quran and I'm doing it just for the sake of Allah, I'm thinking of Allah Azza wa Jal. Or I'm doing some tasbih, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, and I'm thinking of Allah. And Subhanallah means how wonderful, how amazing, how glorified, how perfect Allah is. Alhamdulillah, and I'm actually thanking Allah, but I'm also thinking of Allah at the same time. My mind is not absent. Or I could be making dua, my tongue is moving, and I'm thinking I'm saying this to Allah directly. My tongue is moving, my mind is present. With this, you get reward and this is really good zikr. Any form of worship, tongue is moving, mind is present. You've now got a lot of reward and you've also drawn closer to Allah. The highest level is, the fourth level is, when the tongue is moving and the mind is present and also I'm saying it from my heart and I'm doing it with ikhlas, I'm doing it with sincerity. I'm doing it just for the sake of Allah. This is the highest level of zikr. When you do dhikr alone, when you are remembering Allah alone, and when you're doing it just for Allah's sake and nobody knows and you, know, you don't want anyone to know about it, this is the highest form of dhikr. In fact, Rasulullah has told us at that moment, if you were to shed tears, then you're guaranteed to have your place under Allah's throne on the Day of Judgment. A person male or female, they remembered Allah in secrecy and they shed tears out of, you know, the love of Allah, out of the fear of Allah. They got emotional, all right, and they start to shed their tears. They have got a place under the throne of Allah on the day of judgment. It's a very, very close position you have trying just to remember Allah and become emotional. But this happens when a person is, you know, secret. A person doesn't want anyone to know about it. Now, today's world is a very, very terrifying world because a lot of our ibadah ends up on social media, which shouldn't. Why are you advertising your ibadah to others? There's people who start their salah, they'll tell someone else, take a picture of me while I'm in salah. Allah looks at our hearts and you spoil your worship when you start to share it with others. It's not right. There are people even if that time, all that meal in front of you, look what I'm eating. Poor people from across the world giving you a lot of ayn, you know, giving you a lot of evil eye, I'm telling you, right? I don't know why you want to do that, share all of that. There are people who don't have those kind of foods. It's not nice always to share all of that across the world. But you're doing iftar, it's an ibadah. You don't need to share every form of worship out there that you've got. So you spoil it when you start sharing with others. But nonetheless, what it is, is we're not supposed to tell others or advertise it. Just do it for the sake of Allah. 